Jared, I tell you, I love Christmas. Christmas just comes along and you can eat. Oh, you can eat and you can just do whatever you want and your body doesn't care. Ha <laughs> ha, just knows it's Christmas. Time another board a hole here, and it's Christmas. Happy holidays. We are now dressed appropriately. I don't even know if my hat fits in the screen. Gonna completely break that. Oh well, who cares? These things kind of happen. Yes, you are watching this on Friday, the 25th of December. I hope you have a great day. Maybe you're seeing your family, maybe you're not. I know it's kind of crazy times out there in the world right now, but I'm sending love and power and hopefully fitness techniques to ensure that you stay in shape. Because look, when the holidays come along, we all just want to eat crap. Let's be honest, we all just want to eat crap 365 days of the year. But there's just some magic law that over Christmas time, you could eat whatever you want and your body goes, oh, I'll just ignore all of this. And I think it's really important that you do do that. You need some downtime. You need just some time to chill out. The gym can be stressful and you are physically putting stress on yourself all of the time. And like I say, just as a little bit of a help, just as a little bit of a tip video, here is eight easy ways to keep in shape over those damn holidays. Number eight may sound like an obvious one, but so many people stop doing this. Keep training. I don't get it. I know a lot of the gyms, I mean, this year they've closed all the time, but I know a lot of the gyms will close over Christmas and stuff because people want to go and spend time with their families. But what have we learned in 2020? You can train at home. You can go for a run. Even if all you have is a 20 kilogram weight, can't remember what that is in, uh, in American, things like 40 pounds. It's all about what you can come up with and how hard you can train. If you have one, 20 kilogram dumbbell, you can do bicep curls, you could do some kind of deadlift, you could do some kind of row, if you lay on your back you can do some kind of a press, you could do some kind of squat, holding it by your side or picking it up here, you can do goblet squats, there's so many things you can do. If you know that you're about to, Jabba the Fitness mascot by the way, sorry brother, didn't introduce you, but if you know that you are about to increase your calorie intake by quite a lot, why would you stop training? That's mad. That's like saying, I want to be a girl. I want to get a girlfriend. I want to get a partner, a boyfriend. Well, what are you doing about it? I'm sitting here and hoping someone's going to knock on the door and just come and sort it out. That's not how life works. So absolutely keep training. Whatever you can do is better than doing nothing. Even if you just jump around your living room. I mean, your grandmother will be looking at you like, I knew one day he was going to crack and he's finally gone mad. But you know what you're doing. You're burning calories. That's all cardio is. Cardio is just movement at an intense rate. So if you want to dance around, jump around, play that stupid Wii game. Whereas I've got it. Ring Fit Adventure. Not weird at all, Nintendo Switch. Why am I living in 2004? Play Ring Fit Adventure. I'm not kidding you. It's far better than you would assume. It's really hard to get now. I think it's sold out everywhere. But if you do have it, just smash that out and then you can be doing sneaky cardio in front of your family. That sounds weird. Number seven is to not worry about what you eat. Let's say the holidays is a two week period. It's probably even shorter than that. But let's say it's a two week period. Don't worry about what you consume in those 14 days. Worry about what you're going to consume from Christmas to Christmas, right? What I'm saying here is worry about the 365 year period where you're going to be consistent. You're going to die. You're going to smash it. Don't worry about a couple of weeks where you're going to take your foot off the gas if that's what you decide to do. Too many people will eat a penguin. Say it's chocolate, right? And you eat this chocolate penguin and you're like, oh, what have I done? I can't believe it. And then you're having the turkey and then you're having the ice cream and then you're having some chocolate cake and who knows what else. You're drinking a bunch of booze. Just enjoy that, do it, and then get back to it as quickly as you can. Now, obviously it is possible to put on weight in a short amount of time, but you are really gonna have to kick your ass pretty badly to do it in a couple of days or even two weeks. If you then start going back to what you were doing before and you reintroduce exercise, so on and so forth, you will get back to where you are and then you can start gaining or losing or whatever the hell you wanna do. Remember, that in order for you to be at your physical peak, mentally, you gotta be there as well. So if you wanna have a flipping after eight mint, just eat it and enjoy it. Yeah, number six is plan out your cheat meals, right? Here is something that you can do and nobody would ever do this. I mean, you do do it again in your normal life. Holiday life doesn't count as normal life. You say you're gonna have your cheat meal on a Sunday night, a Friday night, whatever, Saturday. If you know on Christmas day, for example, today, hey ho, you've probably already eaten by the time you've seen this. If you have decided on Christmas day, you know you're gonna have that turkey, just decide what you're gonna have. So maybe you say, I'm gonna have a starter, I'm gonna have my main turkey meal, and I'm gonna have some kind of cake afterwards, and I'm gonna drink X amount of alcohol, right? Whatever the hell you want. If you tell yourself that is your plan, my much like when you plan a meeting, or much like when you plan to go to the gym, or much like any of the things you put in your calendar, you're more likely to stick with it because you put a mental note in your brain that says, make sure you do this. If you just wake up and go, oh, I'm gonna gorge on everything, then you're probably gonna gorge on everything. But it's just these little things, these little tricks that you can do. And don't forget, you don't have to cheat. If you wanna get through the holidays and stay strict and act better than everybody else, you should do it. Of course, of course you should go on Instagram, oh, oh, everything like that. But it's a really, really good idea. And it works in all walks of life. There's things that you don't want to 
do. Just come up with a plan with it and you find when it's time to do it, you just breeze through it and you never think about it again. And number five is don't starve yourself to plan in bad food. Now, I'm not talking about balance or moderation. That's quite smart. So if you know, if you're doing, uh, if it fits your macros, so if your macros are 3,000 calories, you decide you can eat whatever the hell you want within that 3,000 calorie window, that's fine. Don't go, well, I'm going to ruin myself on food. I'm going to eat so much that maybe I'm going to fall over and die. I won't have any breakfast and I won't have any lunch. I'm just going to wait for that meal. Because all that's going to happen is when you get to that meal, you're going to be so hungry, you 100% are going to overeat. Doesn't mean you have to have your normal breakfast or your normal meal two, meal three, but just have a few snacks so that you satiate that hunger a little bit. Of course that's going to happen. It's like sex, right? You haven't had sex for a while. First time you have sex, what happens? Doesn't last very long. And then you build up that cannon once again. If you are absolutely starving by the time a delicious turkey with all the trimming comes out, you'll probably eat the whole turkey. And then your family is going to hate you too. I think starving yourself is always a really, really bad idea. When you're hungry, as your body's saying to you, can I have some food, please? If you broke your arm and your arm was hanging off, you would, oh, I'll just wait till a little bit later when it's more convenient. No, that is not a broken arm. <laughs> that is somebody with a with a different kind of disorder. Absolutely listen to your body, do what it wants, and then maybe it does work. Maybe because you have eaten enough, when it gets to the big turkey dinner, you actually don't eat as much as you thought you would, and then you save in the calories. Number four is don't get wasted. I mean, everybody wants to do it around the holidays, and if you're going to, fair enough. But if you are really looking ways to save calories because you want to spend it on food, right? So many people say that, don't drink your calories, and it makes so much sense because a milkshake has like a thousand calories in it. Think of all the treats you could have for a thousand calories. But if you are going to do it, again, just moderation is the key. I'm not saying you can't get wasted. Um, you don't want to get alcohol mad and be the guy walking around going, oh, man, I love you all so much. You can be that dude, and that's absolutely cool. But I'm, again, I'm talking about the people that are looking for ways just to curb it a little bit. Just have a couple of drinks. You don't have to have 76. Number three is to adjust your training split. And what I mean by that is if you are going to struggle to go to the gym or you are after doing it from home or whatever, just plan in three days and make sure that you do circuits. So not only are you changing it up, so you may actually shock your body into a little bit of growth, unlike but you'll get away with it. Again, just do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or you could do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever works, and just do circuit training. So you work your chest, you work your back, you work your arms, you work your legs, you work your shoulders, you work whatever the hell that you want to work. Just do that for a week. That's all you need to do. It means you're still getting your training in. It can be quite hard time-wise because there's so much going on or you need to make sure you see people. Anyone can get an hour, three hours a week, can't find three hours a week. Of course you can. So just looking at the situation, look at the environment you're in and being like an Android, being like a robot going, what do I need to do in order to get it? in. Just keep it simple, man. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. Simple as that. You kiss your grandma, kiss your granddad, kiss your auntie Joe, kiss your dog called Barry, and you got to kiss this as well. Nice and simple. Don't have to do splits. Don't have to do push-pull legs, break push-pull legs, or chest and tries and backs and bys and legs. Just three overall body workouts. You got your training in. Next week comes along, you can smash it once more. Number two is one I can't believe some people don't get. Just do more cardio. <laughs> <laughs> just do more cardio. It comes right down to it. Calories in versus calories out. If you have planned to get an extra 5,000 calories, I don't know what the hell cardio you could do to balance that out. But just go for an extra run. Add an extra half an hour onto your cross trainer set or your rower or whatever, your stepper, your ab, whatever the hell you do, just do more cardio. It's as simple as that. And then it kind of, I mean, it doesn't really work like this, but it doesn't matter what you eat. Because you've got to balance it out. Balance is key. That's what I want you to say to yourself every day. I want you to wake up, go, man, I love the world. And then I want you to say balance is key. <laughs> or Bic. Balance is key. And then if somebody does share a bed with you, once more, they'll think you're an absolute loon. But like everything over this period, you can get away with it. I don't get it. You're allowed to do whatever the hell you want. And number one is to always remember it's only temporary. It's only temporary. Even if you get through to season and you are put on 14 pounds, <laughs> which is a stone. And if you have, please get in touch because I want to talk to you. Just on the other side, eat a bit less. Do more cardio. Hit the gym again. Your body will sort itself out. It really does take a lot of eating to get to the point where you look in the mirror and you're like, man, I am a slobbery elephant, right? And nobody wants to be a slobbery elephant. I can totally get that. I totally understand. Unless you are a slobbery elephant. Thanks very much. You are really helping with my demos. Don't think a lot of slobbery elephants are eating. But uh, what is it? What is it? A slobbery elephant. Where do these words come from? But it's all about just getting back to it when the holidays are done. And I bet the first time you walk back in the gym, you're going to be so excited. You're going to be so excited because you haven't been there for a while. And that's why we have old cliches such as absence makes the heart grow fonder. I don't know why I picked up Gerald there. He's always with me. 
in my heart. There you go, eight easy ways to stay in shape or at least stay in somewhat of shape over the holidays. Now, please do like the video, share the video, smash the subscribe button, click the bell, ding ding, so you know when other videos are going live. There's another video right there. Give it a click if you've got nothing else to do today. I appreciate hanging out with you. Got an Instagram, got Patreon, got Twitter, got merchandise. It's all in the description. Check it out. That's about it. More importantly, happy holidays. Thank you so much for the support over this year. I never thought I'd be here on Christmas Day talking about fitness on YouTube, but I am. I feel very, very humbled by it. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. See you soon.